Hey, Mike Ross and Juwita Gupta with you. May is Melanoma Awareness Month. And uh, the sun is starting to shine a little bit more often. We hope that most of those gray skies are making their way uh, away from your neck of the woods, wherever you may be listening. And with that comes the uh, need to be more aware about the importance of prevention and uh, early detection uh, for what is the deadliest form of skin cancer. And the Melanoma Network of Canada, or MNC, is committing, committed rather to uh, increasing that awareness. In Canada, melanoma is the seven, seventh most commonly diagnosed cancer, with over 68 cases this year alone. It's one of the most common cancers in youth ages 15 to 29 and is the most aggressive skin cancer if not caught early. Joining us to talk more about the month and how to protect yourself from skin cancer is Annette Sear, the founder and chair of the board of the Melanoma Network of Canada. Annette, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you could join us today. Before we jump into sort of talking a little more about how to protect your skin, perhaps you could start out by telling us a bit more about yourself and about MNC. Absolutely. Um, I was actually diagnosed with melanoma. I came from the prairies and probably had, you know, tremendous amount of sun exposure as a child, as we as we all do. We, we love the sunshine and, and uh, you know, we're all meant to enjoy it, but um, it, it can come with its difficulties, like the high UV ra- radiation that is often associated with it. And I was diagnosed back in 2001 with several reoccurrences of melanoma thereafter, so considered a very high-risk um you know, patient for recurrence, and um, unfortunately, it's a very deadly form of skin cancer if not uh, detected early. Um, as you mentioned in your opening, um, 6,800 um, cases diagnosed last year. We're, we're expecting that number to increase to over 7,000 cases this year alone, and that doesn't account for the thousands of patients that are in treatment for metastatic melanoma. And if you um, combine melanoma with all skin cancers, which are um, very often um, related to sun exposure or UV from tanning beds. It's the number one cancer anywhere in the world with just a significant increases every year. So something to be very, very concerned with and something that the organization um, that I founded in 2009 is really dedicated um, to making a greater awareness of the need for prevention. So, you know, using um, what we call slip, slap, slop, seek and slide <laughs> comes from Australia, which is really, you know, we, we want to ensure that people are seeking shade between peak hours of UV radiation. So anything over a UV index of three, you should look to, to try to seek shade. Um, those are usually prime hours at 11 to 3 uh, during the day. Um, you should also look to wear as much protective clothing as you possibly can. It's not always practical. Uh, no, nor warranted in the summer months, but wherever you can, uh, wear uh, you know a long sleeve shirt, uh, pants, hat, sunglasses, and then of course any exposed skin should be um, covered with uh, UV protective um, uh, sun protection factor 30 sunscreen that has uh, both blocking agents for UVA and UVB. So those are really just the the quick tips. <laughs> so. <laughs> What are some of the misconceptions that people have when it comes to uh, protecting themselves from the sun or the effects of the sun? Well, I'm, I'm so glad you asked. There's so many of them, and I've heard them many, many times as a patient. And many of them I actually believe. Things like getting a base tan. Oh, I've got to get a base tan before I go out or I go on a vacation. And there's no such thing as a significant protection from a base tan. Um, t- changing the color of your skin. Skin that from its uh, you know natural state is actually causing damage to the skin cells. They try to protect themselves by by producing more melanin, the thing that gives our, our skin um, color. But by constantly doing that to your skin, you're actually damaging it, and it can actually alter the DNA, so the the fundamental components of our skin cells, uh, leading to development of skin cancer. So one of the things is getting that base tan. Well, it's just not true. Any any form of tanning is in fact um, danger to your skin and causes premature aging, breakdown of collagen, suppression of the immune system just a whole range of things that really isn't good for you. 
Um, the second thing we hear really commonly is, well, I got to go get my high dose of vitamin D. Well, actually, the, you know, your, your exposure to sun cannot give you sufficient levels of vitamin D. So the best way to get your vitamin D in a harmless fashion is through your, your diet and through supplements. They're very, they're very inexpensive um, at your drugstore to get vitamin D, and um, it's actually recommended that most North Americans get about 1,000 international units supplemented um, daily because we just don't have enough exposure, and nor can the body produce enough vitamin D just from, from sun itself. So, you know, another co- common one is to use the tanning bed as they're safer, and that's absolutely not true. The, the risk of actually uh, significant amounts of radiation through tanning beds are about five to ten times higher than you would get from normal um, daytime sun at, at midday. So uh, uh, tanning beds are known carcinogens, and it's recommended that no one um, uh, use a tanning bed. Right. <clears throat> well, I can safely say I've never, never been to a tanning <laughs> place ever in my life so i feel i feel confident that at least i'm doing that right yes. um now this is of course melanoma melanoma awareness month in yes. in may um i'm wondering what you and the mnc is doing to spread the word and spread you know spread your message well you know funnily enough um the increase in the severity of melanoma really um steps up in a c- couple of different areas men over 50 there's just an ex- extreme uh, increase in the numbers that we see and that's because of cumulative sun damage um, over time so it really starts um, uh, showing up in that population um, who men I, I'm not going to categorize everybody but I think it's harder in some cases for men to use things like sunscreen or protective clothing and things like that but it's just what we see are the numbers uh, in the male population really really significantly higher than than some of the female um, population and as well the youth because of their exposure. We're seeing so many more people in the 20s and 30s. So what we're trying to suggest people do is not only prevent it but as much as you can, but also look at your skin. Have a quick look at it. If you can't um, look at it accurately or you can't see enough, you need to ask um, a, a good partner, a friend, a family member, your spouse, whomever, to have a look at your skin on a, on a regular basis and do a thorough check between your toes, bottom of your feet, legs, arms, shoulders, or around the hairline, anything like that. We, we want to look for moles or lesions that might, might look odd, something that doesn't look like the others. We sometimes call it the ugly duckling. But we also um, enforce things like the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma. We want to look for a mole that's um, not asymmetric. It, it doesn't match if you folded it over from one side to the other. It's, um, you're looking for something with a border that might be irregular. A mole that has multiple colors in it. It's not always easy to detect by the human eye, but sometimes melanomas have multiple colors, black, brown, pink, red, blue in it. You're looking also for the diameter. If something's larger than six millimeters, it should be checked as well. And as well, uh, one I find that's most important is evolving. If it's changing over time, if it's itching, bleeding, oozing, you need to have it checked. And you should be going to your doctor and insisting on being uh, referred to a dermatologist who can really uh, do a thorough check to uh, monitor your moles and make sure that none of them become uh, cancerous. Um, you know, if, if there is a diagnosis, um, yeah. what, what are, what, what are some of the treatments that, uh, that, uh, that you're sort of facing? Well, hopefully you won't need treatment, but if it is, if it is diagnosed, I mean, the first thing that, as with all cancers, is they'll, is they'll, they'll offer it to take it out. So it'll be surgically removed. Sometimes it's just a small excision if it's a early stage melanoma. But if it's advanced, it's gone deeper. Melanoma tends to be like the tip of an iceberg. It doesn't spread so much on the surface of the skin like basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell. It goes deep and it spreads through the lymphatic channels in the blood system. So what um, what the, the surgeon will often do is just remove some tissue around the area of the melanoma. If they have determined it has spread to other areas of the body, you might need additional treatments, which may include things like interferon, which is a very difficult um, treatment. Um, um, or there are, for, for patients that have unfortunately encountered a, a spread in the body to a major organ or elsewhere, we have actually in the last five years been at the center of new uh, groundbreaking treatment therapies for cancer, which are called immuno, uh, immuno-oncology immunodrugs. 
Um, and there are also things like targeted therapies. And these are two different drugs that um, work with your body. One works to target the cancer cell specifically, and an, another, the immunotherapies work to um, uh, enhance your, your immune system to, to get it to recognize the cancer cells. So fortunately for melanoma, which had not had any uh, sort of effective treatment um, in its whole history, uh, the last five years have really proven to be um, phenomenal breakthrough years for cancer and for melanoma. We've been at sort of the ground zero of all of these new cancer treatments and cancer breakthroughs. So we're seeing some significant progress. There's certainly a greater hope for patients who have advanced metastatic disease. Uh, we're seeing some people survive the disease for many, many years and hopefully um, for extended periods. But it's it's not uh, it's not the silver bullet we're looking for yet. So much more hopeful period of time for those with advanced disease. But um, we we can do much more to prevent it, hopefully, or detect it early so that uh, it doesn't become uh, necessary to treat. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know what they say, prevention is better than cure. <laughs> one of the one of the things that I've heard commonly about uh, things like sunscreen is that you should put it on regardless of whether it is a sunny day or if it's cloudy because you're still exposed to the UV. Um, but since I have you on the line, I thought it might be a good time to check in about what you think is the right type of sunscreen for someone to buy. I mean, there's so many varieties out on the market. Would you say it's better to skip what you can find at your local pharmacy and see a dermatologist to get something really, really um, you know, something medically approved maybe because uh, given the, the treatments that are available and given that how, you know, aggressive this can be, most people at home might be thinking, you know what, I'd much rather just get a good sunscreen and beat this one I right out the bay. So I think so too. You know, the best sunscreen that, that I've found is the one that you will wear. And <laughs> I think the majority of people wear a lot less sunscreen than they're supposed to. Um, we don't reapply as often as we're supposed to. So, you know, if you're outside more than two hours or if you're heavily sweating or in water, you need to apply as soon as you, you come out or more frequently if you're sweating as well and wearing it off. Um, most of the sunscreens that are on the market right now um, are approved. Well, in, in Canada, they have to be approved through Health Canada. So the ones that are for sale uh, have been approved and have a, a drug identification number uh, for them. There's a variety, and I think with all different people and different skin types that there is, um, you know, there's a sunscreen that probably fits your needs and your price point. Um, it's not necessary to go to a dermatologist and, and get, a, a, you know, a, 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 a um, one of their recommended ones. Um, unless you have some sensitivities and, and some skin issues, then, then that might be warranted. But for most people, you know, your drugstore brands and uh you know, well-recognized Neutrogena or L'Oreal products will will always uh, be a good uh, a good buy and a good value. So I, I just recommend that people load up on it. If if you've got it left over from last year, it's probably expired. They do have expiry dates on them. Um, a lot of people surprisingly don't know that. So you know, if you buy it, you should. If you're wearing it um, on a regular basis, you, you know, you're going to go through a couple bottles over a season. But as you so smartly pointed out, it's not just summer months. We actually, we enjoy our winter sports as well and our winter outdoors. And the reflection off snow and ice can be actually eight to ten times stronger than, than summer um, off of water and beach sand. So we need to be conscious of the UV index all year round. And even on cloudy days, it's surprising how much um, the sun can penetrate through clouds and how much the UV rays come through. So Check that UV um, index every day and, and uh, wear your sunscreen. Where can we send people if they uh, are looking for more information about protecting themselves and uh, maybe they want more information about melanoma awareness? Well, they can, they can absolutely check out our website, www.melanomanetwork.ca. And there's also a toll-free number there. So feel free to call us and look us up. We've got tons of information and we would welcome your inquiries. Fantastic. Annette, thanks for being here today. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Annette Sear is the founder and chair of the board of the Melanoma Network of Canada, speaking to us about how we can properly protect ourselves from the sun.